just from the first leg. Tom Lawrence and John Lundstrom either side of him. Malik Tillman on the right, Ryan Kent on the left, and uh, Antonio Cholak through the middle. And there is the whistle from Shimon Marciniak, the Polish referee, just like last week when Davide Osato was in charge. UEFA have appointed one of their very best officials for this game. The game begins, PSV in the red and white stripes with the black shorts and the white socks, and Rangers in their blue with the white trim, white shorts, and the black socks with the red tops. And it is Rangers now in possession for the first time in the match. And here is Ryan Kent on the left-hand side. James McFadden's already said how important his involvement could be tonight. Stabs a ball down the line. It comes off the defender, comes off uh, Ramilio, goes behind. Rangers have got a corner in the first minute. Yeah, it's an early chance for Rangers. Um, and they'll, they'll be hoping they can cause their own problems. We, we know about the problems they had last week, but they'll be looking to try and cause as many problems as they can for PSV. Tom Lawrence to take it, the summer signing from Derby County, the former Manchester United youngster. Three goals in his last three matches. Here's Lawrence's corner though, and right into the gloves of goalkeeper Walter Benitez who comes out to the edge of his six-yard box and catches it comfortably. That'll have settled any nerves that he has early on. I'm sure there will be nerves out there. Everyone in those dressing rooms and as they walked out onto the pitch here will uh, be aware of the high stakes involved tonight. Brilliant backdrop to it as uh, Max receives the ball down the left-hand side, goes for an early cross into the penalty area and very nearly a costly slip in the middle by James Sands as he was looking to clear. He lost his footing altogether and he was fortunate. I think he did get a little touch on it, which took it away and Rangers were able to clear. Yeah, and it, it was nearly a disaster for Rangers. Really good play down the left-hand side. First time cross for Max. De Jong had peeled to the back post. So he was looking for it a bit higher in there to the back post. And it looked like Sands was just going to deal with it and he just slipped. But he managed to get his head on it and take it away from trouble. That was, ner that was a nervous start there. Yeah, crucial, crucial little glance that he got on it. Yeah, it's a, it is a concern. Rangers defence with uh, with injuries there. Philip Hallander is out. There's no Ben Davis here either. Another of the, the summer arrivals. So it is, once again, Conor Goldson and James Sands, the USA international. And here's Max on the left-hand side. He's got space this time. He looks up. He angles it back towards the left corner of the box. Clipped in by Gakpo, looking for De Jong. And that was just cleared away by Sands. And then it's played forward by Tillman, but far too much on that. That gives uh, Cholak no chance, and PSV have got it at the back. Yeah, another you know dangerous ball in. Again, dealt with by Sands, and it's not his preferred position, but he's having to stand in for the, the injuries, and it looks like De Jong is, is looking to peel on him, and that is the target when the ball's over that left-hand side. I mean, the ball came back into Tillman. He had it a minute or so ago, and Cholak had made a run in beyond, and this time, it comes to feet and Tillman hits it beyond. Here he is again, the left-back with space. Max gives it to Gakpo on the edge of the penalty area, turns and shoots, but no power in that. And it was uh, an easy one for Rangers keeper McLaughlin just to move quickly to his right and drop down onto. Yeah, and, and Max, that's three times now he's, he's been in that area and we're three and a half minutes into the game. Tom Lawrence is actually playing in, in, in the wide area against them. Tillman's playing in, in support of Cholak, but He's tucking in Tom Lawrence into the midfield, making it narrow, but that's given Max just free rein down that left-hand side. They'll have to address that. Yes, that's the uh, that's the slight difference, isn't it, with Lawrence playing away on the right-hand side and Kamara and Lundstram in the middle and uh, and Kent right out on the left. So it's a slightly different configuration. And then uh, and then, as you say, James Tillman playing in a more central position compared to the first leg for Rangers. PSV nil, Rangers nil. This is the sound of the second leg of this Champions League playoff tie, live from Eindhoven in the Philips Stadium, one of the best sort of middle-sized stadiums, I think, of Europe. Tight to the pitch, the stands are steeply banked, they're full of PSV fans, apart from that section of round about 1,600 Rangers fans. It's a sellout tonight, there's not a spare seat in the place. Still some people down to our right trying to find their seats. PSV with the ball inside their own box. The ball is played across by Ramilio to his central defensive colleague Abispo. And then it's cleared away by Benitez downfield. Rangers have got it back inside their own half. 
So 2-2 after the first leg, it's entertaining. You might well have followed it, followed it with us on Five Live last week. There's Ruud van Nistelrooy as well, all in black on the edge of his coaching area. The early days of his coaching career. He had to be persuaded to take this job when Roger Schmidt left to take over at Benfica last season. But he's made a very good start, Van Nistelrooy. Six competitive matches so far, they're unbeaten and they've scored 20 goals. Brilliant win against Monaco in the previous round when they thought they were going out and won it in extra time. And it is PSV, patient stuff this now, it has settled down and they've got the ball just in front of their own penalty area. Back to goalkeeper Benitez who takes a touch and then plays it out to Max, the, uh, the blonde-haired Philip Max. And now Cody Gakpo turns and passes it back into central defence again and PSV just keeping possession inside their own territory and actually going all the way back into their own fullback position and it finds its way back to the goalkeeper again who passes out short to uh, Ramilio and then it's cleared away downfield by Obispo the man who scored the the second goal for PSV at Ibrox through the middle with Kamara but that breaks down and now he has Sangari you can tell the crowd lift because Sangari is quite a favorite really promising player now the right hand side Saibari into the box pulls it low across the penalty area but Tavani is able to come across and with his left foot clear it away to comparative safety they are probing they're knocking on the door PSV Rangers have got to stand up to this they do because you know they're, they're getting down on the left hand side again yeah here they go again uh, this time Gakpo is tackled well and the ball's out of play which is taken quickly Tavernier with a challenge quick throw in by PSV there's Gutierrez over on the left hand side we do have a choice of listening for you tonight on Five Live Champions League here on Five Live on Sports Extra you can listen to commentary on the Tranmere Newcastle uh, Carabao Cup tie and uh, Conor McNamara is there with news of it and news of a surprise opening goal Tranmere 1 Premier League Newcastle nil. Elliot Nevitz just got his second goal of the season terrible defending from Eddie Howe's team three players running in on the penalty area and it was Nevitz who finished it Tranmere 1 Newcastle nil. Yeah, can listen to that with John Akers and Leon Osman on Sports Extra on your digital radio via BBC Sounds. Uh, we're at all of the matches tonight, including Leeds, Barnsley, Will Perry. Oh, and Leeds have just come very close to going 2-0 up, but it's 1-0 uh, and the goal from Lewis Sinistera in the 21st minute from the £21 million signing from Feyenoord. Central position after Barnsley have been dominant in those opening 10 minutes or so. Beautiful finish past Jack Bolton. Leeds 1, Barnsley 0. Yes, I was at Elland Road on Saturday. They so, said they sold that match out in two days. Balls played forward to Gakpo, who did look offside. Yeah, and there is the eventual flag. So it's a free kick to Rangers. Uh, still Forest Green nil, Brighton nil, and as we heard earlier, Wickham nil, Bristol City one. James McFadden. Yeah, it was it was clearly offside, and it's that rule you have to wait until it touches. <laughs> well, they've, but he's they've, not the slowest Gakpo. They've slightly altered it in, uh, in the UK back at home, but in your way for land you still have to wait for the flag yeah there was a long ball in behind and Gakpo's quick so the assistant referees had to hear it down that <laughs> touch line to try and catch him to put his flag up but it was a good line from Rangers they stepped up in unison and it's maybe something they've worked on maybe it's something like they've identified it's very very risky because if they get it right then it's a long way back but they've done it in a, done it perfectly in that occasion Rangers free kick they are uh, taking their time over this Goldson strikes it long downfield. Ball bounces away out towards the, the right flank. Tom Lawrence is there. Uh, Max comes in with a challenge. But the uh, final touch is off the Rangers man for a PSV throw. Got a little surprise there, James, when producer George suddenly popped up over the front of the desk with a couple of bottles of water for us. Much needed as Much well. Much needed on a night like this. It'll be very, very hot for the players down there tonight. Yeah, it will be. It's really humid. Um, it's been hot, obviously, all day. And the players will be, you know, before the game, Kelly, that's how I thought Rangers would go up, go and approach the game. And given the conditions, it is going to be difficult for them to go and put constant pressure on. They're going to have to pick their moments, make sure they do it at the right time because it's the energy sapping. Yes, and now a lady appears on our right from, from the club, from PSV, with a, with a tray of bottles of water. We, we, we're, uh, we're being very well looked after. Here's Kamara in the middle on the halfway line, plays it forward. Now Lawrence is able to turn and play it out to the right-hand side. Cholak races out there, catches up with the ball. It's played in field, but not 
into the path of Kamara by Tavernier and PSV have got it back half inside their own half and, and Cody Gakpo turns and plays it back and PSV start again from deep inside their own territory yes this is uh, the final night of, of matches in the playoff round the Champions League playoff round so uh, there are two other games going on tonight either Dinamo Zagreb or the Norwegians Bodo Glimt and either Trabzonspor and FC Copenhagen will be the other sides to, to claim the final three places in tomorrow's draw. We'll have news of that, by the way, on Drive throughout uh, the programme tomorrow from four o'clock. Ian Dennis will be on hand to talk you through that draw. PSV nil, Rangers nil. So if, if it's a draw, any kind of draw, after the 90 minutes, that would mean extra time because, of course, there's no away goals rule anymore. And uh, Rangers have the ball at the back just um, saying here that Giovanni Bra Van Bronckhorst before the match was saying that that Rangers had problems getting into the ground we'll come back to that in a moment because Rangers have got the ball inside their own penalty area trying to play out for the back but Goldson then does go long here's Tavernier and Tavernier hits it low to the halfway line but Cholak that's an awful touch from him got it all wrong and just scooped it out of play on the halfway line yeah it's good play Tom Lawrence down the right hand side, he plays it inside, makes a run, and Max doesn't match him. Cholak peels off, Tavernier rolls it into his feet. It's a simple pass to just knock that round the corner first time, or even take a touch and then hit a better pass into the path of Tom Lawrence, who'd gone beyond Cholak, and he just gets it wrong up in the air. It was good play initially, but when it comes into those areas, it, it has to be so much better from Cholak because it's getting Rangers up the pitch it's, and if he takes a bad touch and makes a bad pass it's stopping that attack and just giving the ball back to PSV to knock it around them and PSV played forward down the left hand side to Gakpo Gakpo taking on Lundstrom cutting in field on his right foot then gives it square on the edge of the penalty area it, he's trying to work a position Saibari but in doing so he, he really lost the ball was trying to play it from foot to foot lost possession lost his touch and Rangers were able to clear it away but uh, Gakpo there demonstrating what he's capable of now here's the the right back on the other side Taser plays it into the captain De Jong sliding interception from Kamara and then it's touched away by Tillman PSV looking to ra ratchet up the pressure here but that ball from uh, the central defender Romilio that won't help he's overhit it through to, to the goalkeeper yeah James um, Gio Van Bronco said on getting into the ground he said it was the worst I've seen as a player or manager he said you can expect a club as big as PSV to get the organisation right we had to wait for 15 minutes outside the stadium and one bus just left so we were 20 minutes late for the second bus and they asked to delay kickoff so they could prepare properly but they didn't approve the request here now is Kent cutting in from the left hand side and a right footed shot from him from just outside the area but straight at goalkeeper Benitez yeah but it's an attack it's much better Kent he can go either way he's really comfortable with either foot and Malik Tillman had made a run just inside him he could have played it to him but the space opened up and he's fired it straight at Benitez in goal but at least it's something positive because up until now it's been I mean they're not under constant pressure but PSV have had the ball they've knocked about it well they've got down either side they've put crosses into the box so it is much better from Rangers and, and Van Bronco is clearly unhappy about what happened outside the ground yeah well I, I could see out the window the buses coming in and the PSV bus came in just ahead of it and the fans were all round and obviously surrounding the bus to show their, their support for the players entering the ground here's Gakpo in the centre circle turns gives it to De Jong and then De Jong under pressure, Rangers had him well watched, actually just played it back to, to Veerman and then uh, it came to nothing, his ball forward ended up with goalkeeper McLaughlin. John, I was saying on the, the PSV bus come in, the Rangers buses come in right behind them, so I don't know if that's the organisation that Gio Van Brockers is speaking about, because then you have to wait for PSV to get off, you need to try and clear a space for the fans, obviously the player's safety as well in mind, so that, that could, it, it did look strange to me that they were coming in basically at the same time and maybe that's what he's speaking about and had to be kept on the bus outside the ground. Yeah, low ball in from the right hand side, four Rangers to Cholak, that's better. And now uh, Lawrence, cross field pass from him to Kent. Kent gets the ball quickly under control, a left footed cross, which is glanced across goal. Cholak was in there with two defenders and the touch was, well PSV feel that it was Cholak who got the touch on that. I, I think they might be right as well. 
but the referee says the final touch was off a PSV head and he's given a corner. Yeah, it's sure like the head of it. It was a great ball in. The switch of play out to Ryan Kent, it just takes a touch, Cholak makes the early run to the near post, Kent fires it into that area, he's well marshalled but he does some well to get something on it and the referee's got that one wrong. Corner from the right for Rangers, Lundstrand the target near the penalty spot but he's beaten in the air. And it's Rangers who take up possession again on the right hand side, that's good, nice interplay. Then the early ball into the back post! which is half cleared away, Tezak, the right back, was there ahead of Goldson and was able to get it away. Rangers now, here is some Rangers pressure for the first time in the match for a sustained period of time. Lundstrand plays it in field, Glenn Kamara, little touch from him, back to the, to the halfway line where Sands actually goes all the way to his left, to Barisic, the left back, and then out here on the left-hand side, John Lundstrom, who's had his red card reduced to a yellow today after Rangers appeal the red card the first of the red cards the less talked about red card against Hibbs on Saturday now Kent on the left hand side puts his foot on the ball Kent the former Liverpool youngster uh, is up against Saibari went one way then the other but was forced to go back into his own half and Rangers start with Goldson high long ball out towards the right hand side which is headed in field but Rangers are under this Cholak caught Obispo in possession and has managed to win a corner. Another corner for Rangers. You'll hear that after we get back from Leeds. Will Perry. Leeds, here's Mateus Click. Walton in goal for Barnsley. Click just rolls it past Walton. It was Sinistera taken down by McCarthy and the Premier League side in the 31st minute, 2 0 up. Leeds, you would think, heading through to the third round, even though there's a long way to go. We've uh, played 16 minutes here in Eindhoven. Rangers corner to the near post, that's headed away by Obispo. It comes out a scuffed shot, that's headed away by Ramilio. Comes out to Kent, sets himself for a shot, but that's also blocked by the head of the, the central defender, Ramilio. Rangers collect possession again. Giovan Broncos appears on the edge of the coaching area. And Rangers go forward to Glenn Kamara. Kamara touch out to the left hand side then it comes back to, to Kent and then Kent back to the halfway line this is good from Rangers uh, it's been a great period for them crosses into the box corners and the one previously James Tavenier does brilliant to draw three players in to find Tom Lawrence free in that right hand side I mean he flashes it across Connor Goldson's on his heels at the back post if he goes and gambles and attacks it he's got a great chance to put Rangers in front but it has been so much better this last four or five minutes for Rangers it has PSV nil Rangers nil so 2-2 two -two on aggregate that's James McFadden Scotland international here with us in Eindhoven as Rangers come forward with Tavernier. Tavernier, little chip towards the edge of the penalty area, headed back to him, square from him. Tillman turns as the challenge came in from Saibari, and then Kent goes optimistically for goal and balloons it high above the crossbar. I think um, Tillman was interested in a free kick on the edge of the penalty area, but referee Marciniak wasn't interested. Yeah, he, he just steps across him, uses his body. I, I think he does get a bump in the back, and I, and I have to be honest and say, you know, Ryan Kent stepping onto that from 25 yards at the angle is going to have to be something special to find the back of the net. Or you've got a 20-yard free kick with someone like James Tavernier's ability. That would have been a much better situation for Rangers. Yeah, I think it might have. I think it probably should have been a free kick. We've seen the replay just to our left. I think there was enough in it to give the free kick, but the referee decided not. And uh, now we've got a stoppage because Connor Goldson's taken a bang from an aerial challenge 10 yards inside his own half so it's PSV nil Rangers nil uh, Leeds United as we heard from Will 2 nil up on Barnsley Tranmere winning 1 nil against Newcastle uh, in the Sports Extra commentary match uh, still Wickham nil Bristol City 1 and Forest Green nil Brighton nil uh, James with us here in Eindhoven we've uh, got Charlie Adam and Roddy Forsyth watching from a distance so we'll hear from them at half time and then tomorrow, Test Match Special will be back in the morning for the second test from Old Trafford, the ball-by-ball -ball commentary on Sports Extra. PSV nil, Rangers nil. Goldson's OK, and Rangers just knock it around at the back. Sands turns, gives it to Barisic, who passes it to Kent, but he's still inside his own half and then moves in field. He's going to go for the long pass, he does, right-footed, it's cut out by the head of Romilio, but it still bounces to Cholak in the 
area now on the left hand side Cholak looked to cut it back but Teza arrived to block it behind for a Rangers corner yeah it's a slight bit of fortune for Rangers Ryan Kent's looking for the runner Tom Lawrence on the diagonal he gets it wrong it isn't dealt with by Romalio and Cholak gets into an area where James Tavernier is making the run towards the back Tom Lawrence is the only other target he has and I think from that situation a corner is actually not a bad result for them so it is a corner from the left hand side that Lawrence is going to take so it's an in swinger right footed in swinger here it is to the near post comes off a PSV head Luke de Jong heads it away for the home side and Rangers are back in possession on the halfway line Barisic got options either side Kamara with uh, with a heavy-ish touch with Gakpo not far away from him Barisic is actually going to go all the way back to uh, to goalkeeper McLaughlin just the one change Van Broncos made tonight James Kamara coming in for, for Stephen Davis fair enough um, yeah I think so I think that it could either could either have been Davis or Kamara Stephen Davis played last week obviously he got rested at, at the weekend and, and Ryan Jack came in he played the 90 minutes and he doesn't normally play games back to back in quick succession so yeah I think Kamara was the probably the, the more obvious choice for him Rangers lose possession on the halfway line Cholak was dispossessed by Gutierrez and now PSV come forward dangerously again Veerman clips it forward but goalkeeper McLaughlin comes gets a good punch above the head of Cody Gakpo who was furthest forward closest to the ball PSV again Joey Joey Veerman who caught the eye in the first leg not really heavily involved just yet 20 minute, 21 minutes on the clock still nil nil back it goes to uh, Abraham Sangari who also caught the eye I suspect he'll have a, a big move him in at some stage Sangari yeah you would imagine so and, and Veerman you know the interesting part of that is Stephen Gerrard tried to sign him last year missed out um, we know the stories that can be thrown up in football Rangers will be hoping he does it, that doesn't come back to haunt them tonight. Yeah, Joey Veerman. Nil-nil. And further news from Leeds from Will Perry. Ten minutes before the break, it's game on because it's Leeds 2, Barnsley 1, a free kick. Josh Benson swung it in and there was the captain, Mads Anderson, at the far post to stick his header past Elan Melier. Leeds 2, Barnsley 1. Still nil-nil here, still waiting for the first goal of this second leg on this atmospheric night. I hope it's coming across to you. The drums beating out the, the rhythm. The place is absolutely packed. Two tiers all the way around. The uh, the advertising hoardings are all lit up with the Champions League logos. And uh, in the end to our right, lots and lots of bare-chested PSV supporters. We saw them in one of the big bars right outside the ground with black T-shirts on. And now they've taken off those black T-shirts and have gone bare-chested for the evening. Balls out of play for a throw to PSV, deep inside their own half. First goal of the night between Forest Green and Brighton, Sohail Sahi. First bit of quality all night, John. It's gone to Brighton, Forest Green nil, Brighton one. Dennis Undev with the finish from just inside the area. Forest Green nil, Brighton one. Rangers uh, thought they had a free kick, but the referee lets it go on the halfway line. It's four towards Kent. Kent uh, is beaten by the challenge from uh, Saibari, but the ball just bounces back to Rangers. Much more of an even contest now. Yeah, it is, but that's a brilliant pass into Ryan Kent, and he needs to take that touch forward on his left foot and get turned and straight at the defence. He takes the touch back, and they almost give the ball away, and now they have. He's got a great opportunity there. You mentioned earlier in the game, he's taking a touch inside his own half, and a lot of the time that's what happens. But that is a golden opportunity for him to turn and drive at the defence, the last line of defence, and it's a poor touch and a poor decision from Ryan Kent. Yeah, and we saw didn't we in that in the first in the first leg with with Rangers first goal you know that what what quick slick passing can do you know that can that can break down any team yeah, absolutely and, and Ryan Kent where do you want him you want him running at defenders more often than not it has to be two or three men to create any space but he had a chance to go 1v1 there Sangari's caught in possession PSV lose it so Lawrence carries it downfield halfway inside the PSV half but then turns checks back and gives it to Tabernier now Glenn Kamara back into the centre circle and uh, and Sands who actually slipped again a moment or so ago that's the second time he's lost his footing which uh, is is certainly not ideal if one of your central defenders can't keep his feet Cholak 
back again to Lawrence. Lawrence now out to Kent again. Kent, there's the first touch. Second touch, Taser comes to close him down. And then he turns, gives it back. Here's the cross from Barisic into the penalty area. Emilio uh, Gutierrez actually heads that away. Stooping header, roundabout chest height. Goldson now turns and gives it back to Sands again. And then Kamara with a first-time touch. Lundstram, this is all centrally from Rangers. Kamara, this is a long period of possession for Rangers. Now Kent on the left-hand side. Kent low into Cholak, first-time touch from him. Tillman, left side of the penalty area. Tillman back to Lundstram, whose right foot shot is narrowly wide. And he holds his head, John Lundstram. I'll tell you what, it's absolutely fantastic play from Rangers. Ryan Kent just pings the ball straight into the feet of Cholak, knocks it to Tillman to his left-hand side. And it looked like he'd taken too many touches, but he just waited the pass perfectly for John Lundstrom to step on it. And we've seen him score for, from those areas. He catches it really well, but just fires past the near post. Really good play from Rangers. That's exactly what you called for. That slick movement, quick movement. Still PSV nil, Rangers nil, but that's the closest Rangers have come. Uh, back to Prenton Park, Conor McNamara. Equaliser for Premier League Newcastle. Tranmere won, Newcastle won, and it's a goal in his first appearance of the season for defender Jamal Lascelles after a free kick was floated into the area. Long delay for an injury to Emil Kraft, who's had to be replaced. Tranmere switched off for the restart, and Newcastle back on terms thanks to Lascelles. 1 1. Thank you, Conor. Commentary on Sports Extra on that match. Cholak. Now back into uh, John Lundstrom. It's narrowly wide, maybe maybe a foot wide, maybe six inches wide, not much more than that. Now Kamara. Rangers have settled into the game here. Ruud van Nistelrooy down there is looking a little, just a little edgy. And I can understand why. Huge pressure, as, uh, as we were saying on the uh, Football Daily podcast, PSV really need this money as well it's talked so much about the financial importance for rangers but it's equally important financially to psv as kent is fouled by Ramilio, who slides in from the back and that's a yellow card for Ramilio. so psv nil rangers nil where are we going next back to leeds will perry penalty to barnsley from two nil down callum styles who won the penalty has the chance to level it at ellen road goes to the bottom right corner but it's saved you can hear the cheers by Elan Melier. Brilliant save, but what a brilliant comeback this looks like from Barnsley. 2 0 down, they're right in this game. It's Leeds 2, Barnsley 1. 2 1, and it sounds like quite a game at Allen Road in that uh, West Yorkshire, South Yorkshire derby. Actually, I think that might have been Gutierrez, was it, who, who put in that challenge on the halfway line? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, just need to check that. I just need to check who got that yellow card. It was good play again. Ball into Tillman, just flicked it round the corner for Kent, and you can see it coming a mile away because he wasn't ready. Um, and it's, it's, it's no doubt it's a yellow card. Kent takes a sore one. PSV nil, Rangers nil. So if I can check that once I can get this Wi-Fi working. There's a lot of people in here tonight, so it's, it's a little bit slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, it was, uh, yes, it was Romilio. I was right in the first place. It was Romilio who was yellow card. That uh, could be significant. We don't want to get that, uh, we don't want to get that wrong. If uh, either of these sides lost a man, you know, that changes everything. So Romilio, one of the central defenders, is yellow carded. And uh, here is Romilio at the back. You, you wouldn't miss the first match in the Champions League as a result of uh, accumulating yellow cards in the playoffs. But if you were sent off, you would get a suspension for the first match or matches in the Champions League group. Nil-nil. Here is Cody Gakpo. Low ball in towards the edge of the penalty area, but it breaks down for, for PSV near the edge of the box. They've gone off the boil. Or perhaps more correctly, Rangers have come into it more. Yeah, I think it is that the Rangers have come into it more, they've used the ball well, they've got back in numbers. The threat that Max was posing in the early part of the game hasn't been quite there for PSV. They haven't been able to knock the ball about, although they are now. Yes, they are with Fiamman into the penalty area. Gakpo goes down two or three yards outside the box. He was between Tavernier and Goldson, but the referee's not having any of that. And in fairness, Gakpo didn't actually appeal. No, he made his, his decision pretty quickly, the referee. Yeah. He's just thrown himself to the ground. It's, yeah. it's a correct decision. But they're looking for those little 
straight balls in behind the defence and making runs in between Tavernier and Goldson and then Sands and Barisic on the other side. And they are they are close to getting it right, so it's something they need to put pressure on the, the man that's playing the pass or they need to be alert to the runs that are getting made in between them. PSV nil, Rangers nil, Rangers win a free kick 10 yards inside their own half. Ruud van Nistelrooy, all in black, apart from he's got little white flashes on his black trainers down there. Heavy bearded now, sculpted beard. He looks like he could still play. He looks in fantastic shape, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. It's sickening to see John yeah, sitting here. Isn't it? Just, you limping <laughs> with your bad knee. 46 years old now, Ruud van Nistelrooy. He, he is still sixth in the the record of, uh, of goal scorers in the Champions League. Only five players have scored more goals in the Champions League European Cup than Ruud van Nistelrooy. Here's Luc de Jong, heads it forward to the halfway line. Now it's taken on by Saibari. Saibari on his right foot. He's got options in field, but he's going to take it in field himself. All right foot though, Saibari. Then plays it to, to uh, Gakpo, 25 yards out. Then back to Saibari. More centrally now to uh, Sangare. Breaks down Fearman, in comes Tillman with the challenge, and the ball bounces away out of play here on the right hand side. Kent couldn't get there, so to throw in just about level with the edge of the Rangers penalty area. The momentum just moving back to PSV again. Still nil nil the score, five live, and BBC Sounds live at the Philip Stadion. Gutierrez left footed, he's looking for Max, but uh, a leaping Tavernier pulls the ball down with his right foot and then passes it forward and he wasn't able to find the pass to Lawrence in fact he's given it away to Gakpo who's interested here low ball into Luke de Jong now Max in the box shoots from the angle and it comes off the right boot of Goldson and bounces up and behind for what is PSV's first corner and as has been very widely discussed Rangers very susceptible from corners yeah and James Savanier just his, his hand up in the air and apology at the pass but this is a test for him because he scored two last week and Conor Goldson speaking yesterday was saying it's a new system, it's something they're working on they have to be brave and be big tonight Yeah, so they work on it the day before every match here is the corner then, McLaughlin comes and gets a good punch on that in amongst a, a clutch of red and white striped shirts Veerman plays it back into the box Gutierrez with a header across goal but uh, well wide of the mark from uh, from it might well have been Romalio again. I'm having problems with Romalio and uh, and Gutierrez. I think it was him who uh, headed it away. Here's Saibari playing it into the box. De Jong. De Jong might find the position. Rangers men all around him, but he's forced to take it back out of the penalty area. PSV having to get on the right hand side. Vierman with a little pass, and then a, a quick turn from Saibari, looking to get it back on the edge of the area from Sangari. It runs to Cody Gakpo on the edge of the box, turns and shoots but scuffed it, scuffed as he tried to whip the shot and hit it well wide. Yeah, and I mean, it's difficult for him to see because he's behind them, but Max had made an overlap and the, the crowd in front of us are pointing for, for Gakpo to have played that pass, but he would have had to back heel it and, it, and it's a difficult skill, but he just can't get the ball out of his feet to get his shot away. And actually, it's good pressure from Rangers because they're getting bodies around them, they're making it difficult. Yes, PSV are starting to sharpen up and, and get more control in the game but when they're getting the ball into feet in and around the box Rangers are putting pressure on and forcing them back the way or forcing mistakes 33 minutes played still waiting for the opening goal here tonight there have been goals in all of the Carabao Cup matches that are being played this evening and another one at Forest Green Sahil Sahi yeah it's half time now John Forest Green nil Brighton 2 Forest Green more than matched their higher ranked opponent for 38 minutes and then a piece of quality from the outstanding player of the night Dennis Undov finished off a silky move with put Brighton in front Stephen Alzate added a second half time Forest Green nil Brighton 2 half a chance for Cholak inside the penalty area received it was looking to turn and shoot but PSV were quickly onto him and now here's Max on the halfway line the halftime whistles will be going in in those other matches as well we'll get to them shortly but Rangers important challenge by uh, Sands in fact they, the home fans you can hear feel that that should have been a free kick for the challenge on Saibari and the referee stopped play because Saibari has stayed down yeah uh, I think it's a good challenge I really do Sands reads it well steps in there is a there is a bit of contact but I think he takes the ball 
Um, and understandably, the, the crowd are going to be crying for ev uh, shouting for everything. And we've just got a chance to see it again. It's a brilliant challenge from James Sands. He gets in there first. There is contact afterwards, but no foul for me. Yeah, got the ball, got a bit of the man. It's a strong challenge. TSV supporters, I think, saw it differently, hence the whistles. TSV nil, Rangers nil. Those half-time whistles will be going. I think we can go to Elland Road, Will Perry. Leeds 2, Barnsley 1, new boy Sinistera gave the Premier League side the lead, allowed to shift onto his right, curling past Walton from the edge of the D. Sinistera won the pen, which led to 2-0, click rolled it in from the spot, and 57 league places between them, the visitors have made a real game of it. They got one back, Anderson heading in a Benson free kick, Callum Styles then missing a penalty, Leeds 2, Barnsley 1. Cholak with the cross here for Rangers, looking for Kent at the back post, but he didn't attack it, Luke de Jong did. The centre forward back in his own penalty area, heading it behind for a Rangers corner. That's the first thing I thought about as the ball came in. It's coming to Ryan Kane. Can it get something on it? And it's Luke de Jong, the striker, that is back defending. Corner then. Lawrence and Kent are together for this one. But Kent turns and walks away, just pinches his nose as he does so. So Lawrence is going to swing it in. Rangers. With this set piece from the left hand side. Here's the corner, played in for Rangers, but goalkeeper comes and punches it away. Walter Benitez safely, safely away. Outside the penalty area. Again, it's swung in. Lawrence, a deep one to the back post, but that's beyond Connor Goldson and through. And it is uh, a goal kick for the home team. Still PSV nil, Rangers nil here with uh, just under 10 minutes to go until the half-time whistle. It is half-time at Prenton Park, Conor McNamara. And it's Tranmere 1, Newcastle 1. The League 2 side took the lead, a breakaway goal scored by Elliot Nevitt. Uh, but Jamal Lascelles, the uh, captain at the start of last season for Newcastle, who hasn't been involved in their early Premier League games this season, makes it Tranmere 1, Newcastle 1 of the break. Uh, to Wickham shortly, but uh, Rangers on the move again, but the ball is won back by Saibari. PSV have got it inside their own half. Here is the, the little Mexican with the, the flowing black hair, he's got a thick black headband on, looks over his shoulder, Gutierrez then goes back to the edge of his own penalty area, so we'll bring in Robin Cowan from Wickham, Bristol City. Wickham nil, Bristol City one at the break, 18-year-old Dylan Kaji with the goal in his on his debut, turning in a knockdown from a corner after seven minutes. Wickham ended the half the better, Al Hamadi has looked bright. Yeah, so with a cross from the right-hand side, De Jong was sliding in, just couldn't get there, and the ball's out of play on the left-hand side. I'll come back to you, Robin, in a moment or two, but PSV would take this throw quickly. Gakpo, Gakpo back to Gutierrez, that was so close to De Jong in the middle from Tezas cross. Uh, and then the ball is cut out on the edge of the area by Kamara, but it's bounced off Cholak, and PSV are back in business again. Ball comes across via a deflection, it's actually come off Kent and runs away out of play for a corner to PSV from the right-hand side, James. Yeah. They've got a lift from that cross, it was an excellent cross, right across, in between defence and goalkeeper. De Jong just can't get there, but it's such a dangerous cross that any touch on it could put that towards goal and it's given PSV a lift. They've got another opportunity from a corner, they'll be hoping to do much better from this one. I think that, I think that was PSV's best chance so yeah. far in the match. They've had shots at goal, but uh, De Jong was very close to that. Here's a corner, Gakpo from the right-hand side, so another corner for Rangers to defend, and it's headed up and over the top. That was easy, too easy for Sangari, he should have scored. Yeah, that is now the best chance, John, there's no doubt about it. He's free, no one anywhere near him, he's got a lot of time to see it, and he just scoops it high over the bar. He's trying to aim it back towards the back post, just cushion it, but he just gets it wrong to the relief of the Rangers players. James, that, that's not good enough, defending from a corner. It's not, and it's something we've obviously spoken about, Rangers will be aware of. PSV are a big side, they've got threats all over, uh, the, the box, Sangari on this occasion, but they have to be picked up, there can't be any free headers. No, if you do that, you'll concede sooner or later. Rangers coming forward, but the offside flag is up, and uh, PSV with the free kick halfway inside their own half. This is, um, you know, for everything that was said before the match, this, yes, this is, a, this is a closely fought encounter between these sides here. Yeah, it is, and it's something that, that we thought would, would be the case. 
I think that you know PSV started better, Rangers then got control of the match. It looks like it's swung back in favour of PSV and I expect it's going to be like this for the rest of the night. And it wouldn't surprise me if, if both de neither team finds you know the breaks a deadlock and they, they go to extra time, but it's just swinging either way at the minute. Uh, it, uh, it is Wickham Wanderers nil, Bristol City 1, incidentally. We'll have more from Robin Cowan later, once the second half gets underway. PSV nil, Rangers nil. Here's Saibari, away from Lundstrand down the right-hand side. Kutzen field, left-footed shot, but it comes off Sands. His, uh, the top of his knee, I think, which took it wide of goal. Might have been going wide anyway, maybe not, but the touch from the defender took it wide for a corner from the left. Yeah, it's excellent play from Saibari down the right-hand side. Drop of the shoulder, lets the ball run across his body and he's one-on-one -on -one with Borna Barisic. It's a brilliant touch from James Sands because it's, it's on target and it's one that if you can stop your goalkeeper from making the save, then that's what you do, but they've got another corner to defend against here. Yes, they have. Gakpo plays it into the near post, looking for Luke de Jong. That was headed away, comes out to, to Philip Max, the left back, 30 yards out, somewhere between 25 and 30 yards, and he got right underneath it, and I, I think he might a very nearly reached the second tier of the Phillips Stadium. But yeah, it's a goal kick. it wasn't the best effort. And I know we're speaking about Rangers and how they have to defend, you know, the, the corners and, and set plays better. But they really don't have a lot of height on their side. They've got Golds and Sands that would pick up. Cholak is obviously tall, six foot two, I think. Lundstrom can do that job. Tillman's good in size, but I wouldn't say, you know, properly switched on defensively in that situation. So, so they are out, outmatched, they're overmatched with height, if you like. So they have to get tight and make sure there's no free headers. Yeah. The, the home fans are, are howling. They wanted a free kick for that sliding challenge centrally by Lawrence on Gakpo, but he, he got the ball. I think it was a good challenge. He's OK, he's on his feet. Saibari, though, has PSV come forward again. And now the cross from Sangari from the right-hand side. That's intercepted by Sands. Comes back to Sangari again. Sangari through to Saibari. And then uh, there is the cover there from Sands, who comes across and lifts the ball with his left foot out of play for a throw down the right-hand side. PSV nil, Rangers nil. It's not had the goals and thrills and spills of the, the last commentary match you were involved in on Five Live on Sunday afternoon, but... The, this is absorbing yeah. because of because of what it means. Yeah, uh, it will take a lot to beat that game anyway. on Sunday, John. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. But yeah, th this is obviously a different type of game. It's teams have got each team has got something to lose, and each team has got an unbelievable reward if they win the game. And it's understandable that there's not going to be you know loads of goals that haven't been yet. But it's still been a, a great game. Taser swings it in. That's good. To go shot but straight at goalkeeper McLaughlin who very gratefully I think it almost hit him actually and then he was able to drop on it it was a stretch with his left foot from De Jong probably eight yards out straight at the keeper yeah I, I think it's a, a difficult chance because he can only take it first time and in those situations it's about getting it on target which he did the movement from De Jong is outstanding but Connor Goldson has to see him. He has to defend that better. And he'll be grateful that it's fired at John McGlotton, who managed to keep a hold of it. Now the ball played through to Gakpo. Goalkeeper comes out. Gakpo shoots over the top of the bar. There was a defender there as well. The keeper was quickly out. But that, another big chance for PSV not taken. It's a huge chance. And this is one where he should do so much better. The young one, it's the only thing he can do is get something on it. Gagpo's got time, he's got a huge target to the back post. John McLaughlin has come down to narrow the angle, which has left a huge gap to his left-hand side. And Gagpo, with his right foot, it's a simple skill just to pass that into the net. He leans back and scoops it over the bar, again to the relief of John McLaughlin, the Rangers players. PSV, every chance I've had, has got more and more dangerous. A better chance, better opportunity every single time. And that would be a worry for Rangers. Yeah, they've had a really rocky five, six minutes or so. The uh, the chance initially for De Jong, uh, when, it was, when it was whipped across, then the Sangare header from the corner. That was a good chance. Then De Jong shot straight at the goalkeeper. Then that one there, Gakpo through the middle when, uh, you know, just a little bit of composure was needed there from, from Gakpo. I suppose it demonstrates that, that he's not yet the finished article. 
No, he, he, he's, he's in a, no, a position where you're right, a bit of composure to just slot that away. He is trying to do that. It's not that he rushed it, he just gets the execution wrong. But of course, he's, he's obviously young and he will improve. But that is an absolutely brilliant chance for them. That's big for, for Rangers in the context of what we've been watching in the last 10 minutes or so because uh, Kamara's won a free kick over on the far side and they can slow it down. Half time approaching. We are in the 45th minute. So uh, a free kick that Tavernier is going to swing in from out on the right hand side. PSV, their line of red and white is along the edge of their own penalty area. Rangers blue mingled in with all of that. Tavernier hits it into the back post. It's over the top of Gutierrez. And Romilio is there as well. And the ball is kept in play by Kent. And Kent plays it into the box to Tillman. And Tillman turns and plays it back to the edge of the area. And the shot, which is hit low by Lawrence, was going wide, actually hit Tillman and very nearly ricocheted across the box. But PSV cleared. And that is the half time whistle. And it's nil nil. And I think after that last 10 minutes, Rangers can consider themselves rather fortunate to still be level. Yeah, they can. PSV started well, Rangers come back into it. But the chances that PSV have created in the last five, five or so minutes, what you would think they'll certainly be getting in at the break. Disappointed, Rangers will be feeling fortunate that they're still level. However, they have managed to create a couple of chances of their own. Better finishing, better decision making. It's just a fascinating game and it's, it's certainly far from far from finished with the drama i cannot believe there will not be goals in the second half but it is nil nil at half time psv nil rangers nil here in eindhoven so that's 2-2 on aggregate and just to remind you again remember there is no away goals rule anymore so the tie is completely level so uh, roll on the second half john james looking forward to listening to it um we're going to let you go and have a break and enjoy that water that you've been furnished with throughout the course of the first half. Um, instead, we're going to talk to Charlie Adam and Roddy Forsyth about the game. Charlie, as the, as the guys were saying there, yes, PSV may have had the, definitely the best two chances of the first half. There's not that much in it. Uh, Kelly, I've wrote down unbelievable 45 minutes, for, uh, 38 minutes for Rangers. The last seven minutes, Rangers were all over the place. And up to that point, they were brilliant. They controlled the game, controlled the tempo, good pressure, had chances. Um, but, you know, when you if you switch off and you make your own mistakes, it always gives a team like PSV chances. And, and they've managed to come into the game the last seven, eight minutes and, and big chances. And Rangers will be delighted to be in a halftime. No, no, no. Roddy, we haven't learnt a lot for a lot from from that first half that we didn't know before namely the fact that rangers are vulnerable from set pieces particularly from corners yes and uh, early on i was interested in the fact that uh, the pos the possession stats were hugely in favor of psv they were in the high 80s at one point and then it occurred to me of course that rangers had not got the prep that they wanted they'd asked for the kickoff to be delayed 20 minutes and sure enough on the 20 minute mark rangers began to come into it with that long spell up until shortly before half time but what does worry me a little bit was that uh, singari should have hit the um, target uh, shortly before the interval and if as uh, others have noticed if he'd missed that ball Gutierrez was there not being marked also free and I think that's something that Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is going to talk to his players about at half time because I've noticed in the last 10 minutes before the break that quite a few PSV players in subordinate positions but backup positions were free they were indeed and, and there have been issues there that Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is, is going to want to talk to his players about but those chances that Rangers have, have given up, Charlie, they could, the Rangers could have had, you know, could have had goals of their own, but they really, PSV should have scored at least two of theirs. Yeah, Sangara had a great header, free header at the back post from a set play. Like you say, Rangers are, are not um, defending set plays. And I think it's been a problem for, for the last few years, really, set plays. Um, De Jong had a, a big chance, a wonderful cross from Teze, the right back. De Jong just nearly got in the end of it. Um, and then obviously gag post chance that was the biggest one of them all he goes clean through and all he had to do was save for it and he dinked over the bar but the warning signs for Rangers are that you know this is a good PSV team and um, they will cause problems but you know in the end you know getting into half time now now they can relax and, and regroup and come out second half but um, no listen Rangers are well in the tie there's no doubt about that there is opportunities for them to score goals and it's just they just need to take care in the, in the final third Charlie, James and John, you, oh, sorry, I was going to say, 
when you look at the Rangers substitutes and think what they might do in the second half, how wonderful would it have been for um, Van Bronckhorst to have had a properly fit Morelis on that bench, uh, indeed, if he didn't start, because you suspect that he, somebody like that would have to come on uh, to reinforce the, ta- uh, the attack later in the match, and yet there's nobody of that calibre on the bench. The nearest would be Fashion Sakala, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, Sakala or maybe Matondo, who's got real burning, uh, he's got real pace that, that can you know, get you, especially away from home, can get you up the pitch. Um, Scott Wright's quick as well. So listen, they've got other attributes um, and, and you deal with what you have. We could all wish we had Morelos, but he's not there. And, um, you know, these lads that are on the bench, you know, they could be coming off, being ready and, and they could be the match winner. So you never know. Charlie, it was interesting listening to, to James and John. James was saying there's a really strong chance this would end up going to, to extra time. And then John said, if there's no goals in the second half, I'll be really <laughs> surprised. But it, it <laughs> It is. It's that. It's that finely balanced. Yeah, it is. Both teams have conceded chances, even in the first leg as well. You know, you don't get two two if teams are not conceding chances. So, I think there will be goals in this second half. Um, and and let's say if if, if it goes in the Rangers' favour, then it'll be great um, for them. But uh, you know, they have to keep the, the back door shut because you know, at set plays, it's always a worry at the moment with Rangers. Nil nil, a good res- uh, well, a good scoreline at half time, Ruddy. Yeah, you would feel so. It, uh, some of the player, significant amount of the player, reminds me of Rangers in Dortmund. But by half time, they were a couple of goals up, and uh, that was a game that uh, let's have to say him again, Alfredo was playing in. But uh, they look comfortable. That's the one thing you felt with Rangers when they reached the Europa League final. That run that they had of 19 games that took them to that final. They so often looked comfortable and they don't look discomforted at the moment. Although that is dependent on PSV having passed up a couple of very good chances. Roddy, Charlie, for now, thank you very much. They'll both be joining us again at full time in that game in Eindhoven. It's PSV Eindhoven nil, Rangers nil, two all on aggregate. And as John Murray was explaining, no away goals rule. So it is two all. It's absolutely level. One of the sides has to break the deadlock or they're going to extra time or potentially penalties after the next 45 minutes. We'll be back in Eindhoven for commentary of the second half of that one. Also EFL Cup action this evening. There are four ties there. They're about four or five minutes into the second half at Forest Green against Brighton, with Brighton leading by two goals to nil. Leeds were comfortably 2-1 up against Bar- uh, 2-0 up against Barnsley. Barnsley have pulled it back to 2-1 and had a penalty saved in that game. Tranmere won, Newcastle won. Tranmere were leading, Newcastle have drawn level. And Bristol City are leading 1-0 at Wickham. We'll keep you up to date with all of that and we'll go around our reporters who are all of those games after the BBC News with Stuart Clarkson. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. A man who was targeted by a gunman in a shooting that killed a nine-year-old girl in Liverpool has been arrested and will be questioned about her murder. Joseph Nee, who's 35, is currently in a stable condition in hospital. Olivia Pratt-Corbell was shot as her mother struggled with two men at a door of her home on Monday night. Police are asking people to come forward with the information still to trace the gunman. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky says a Russian missile strike on a rail station in the country has killed at least 15 people. Mr Zelensky told the UN Security Council around 50 others had been wounded. After the meeting, Ukraine's ambassador to the UN, Sergei Kislitsia, said peace talks with Russia might not happen if they continue to prosecute members of the Azov battalion who fought in Mariupol. If uh, the Russians will go ahead with their theatrical uh, court and, um, you know, against the members of Azov battalion, uh, it may uh, mean the point of no return when it comes to the possibility of uh, peace talks with, with the Russians. British Gas has announced tonight it's going to donate 10% of profits to its Energy Support Fund, which provides grants and money advice to customers who are struggling. There'll be an immediate £12 million donation to the fund, which the firm says is more than 10% of its pre-tax profits for the first half of the year. Passengers heading to Dover from France are being warned of long waiting times at Calais, which are understood to have been caused by border force staffing shortages. The ferry operator DFDS says some people are facing delays of up to three hours tonight. Regular COVID 
COVID-19 testing for people without symptoms in England in settings such as the NHS and social care will be paused in a week's time. The Department of Health says cases are falling and the risk of transmitting the virus has been reduced because of the vaccine programme. Testing will remain in place for certain groups, including those being admitted to care homes. And a study has found that people who look extremely alike often behave similarly as well. Researchers in Barcelona analysed 32 pairs of unrelated doppelgangers. They discovered the couples had similar DNA and frequently shared behavioural traits such as smoking. Essential football listening. More live Premier League football than anyone else. One, 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 one. Plus, get BBC Sounds to catch up or download podcasts, including Transfer Gossip Daily and the Football Daily. Big names and big debates, seven days a week. Proper football with Chris Kamara and Ben Shepherd. A new podcast where you sports stars tell us what it's really like to be a footballer. You don't want to miss it. Like the time you missed that red car coming? Give over. And coming soon, Jermaine Defoe. Outside the box. Essential football listening is right here. They're rattling in the goal. Including more live Premier League football than anyone else. Get your football fix. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live. This is Five Live Sport with Kelly Cates. Live commentary of the Champions League deciding qualifier between PSV Eindhoven and Rangers coming up for you. It's the second half. It's two all on aggregate, nil nil on the night. Rangers looking to qualify for the knockouts of the group stages of the Champions League for the first time in 12 years. We'll also keep you up to date with four ties in the EFL Cup this evening. And in the 100 men's competition, London Spirit are playing Welsh Fire at Lords. Henry Moran is watching for us. It's looking like a tall order for the Welsh Fire who are yet to win a game this season. They aid 59 from 21 deliveries. They're chasing 157, but it is the bowling of Dan Lawrence that has done the damage. He's picked up four wickets from his 20 balls, including that of Ben Duckett, who had top scored on 34. Looking like a long shot for the Welsh Fire to win this one. London Spirit on course for yet another win. Thank you, Henry. Tomorrow on Five Sports Extra, the Test Match special team are back with coverage of England's second test against South Africa. The hosts still reeling after they were blown away in the first test against South Africa. They lost by an innings and 12 runs inside three days. They've recalled pace bowler Ollie Robinson to their 11 and they've dropped Matthew Potts. Jonathan Agnew was speaking to captain Ben Stokes earlier today. So what does he think the team needs to do to turn the series round? Just play better. We've got to play better than what we did and um, at Lords we just didn't execute how we wanted to play and you know that's part and parcel with sport you know it's sport is set up for there to be a winner and a loser congratulations South Africa for winning and unfortunately we were the losers on that week but you know we're here now in Manchester and then you know hopefully win this game take it to the oval and then hopefully we lift the trophy at the end 2-1 yeah. and tactically especially the short bowling have you, have you thought about that are you going to change that necessarily Look, it's something where we have, you know, a big thing for me about the team is like commitment to anything that we do and anything that we've decided on we're going to do. I feel as if there's any doubt about something when you, when you do do it, you're already one step behind. And it's something that we've been very, we've gone into detail about as a bowling group and, you know, me and myself as a captain and, you know, the management who make decisions out there. It's, it might not be something that everybody's used to seeing, you know, is when the tail come in that, you know, we're going to look to be very aggressive against them. but. We're committing to it and everybody's flying into that and that's so important because when we have that mindset towards anything we do, there will come a stage in a game where that commitment to the cause of what we're doing will, will help us. Because as I said, if you're not committing to it, you're only one step behind. That was Ben Stokes talking to Jonathan Agnew. It's an 11 o'clock start on Five Extra for TMS, a coverage of England's second test against South Africa. Let's head round the EFL Cup ties this evening then, starting at Wickham, where there's been a goal, Robin Cowan. A blistering start to the second half of the League One side. Wickham won, Bristol City won, and another debut goal this evening, this time for Ali Al Hamadi, rising highest at the back post to nod in a terrific cross from the left hand side. So all Square between League One Wickham and Bristol City, one apiece. 
Thank you very much, Robin. And there's been a goal at Tranmere, Conor McNamara. It has come seven minutes into the second half. It is for the visitors, Premier League Newcastle, who now lead at Tranmere by two goals to one. Chris Wood has just headed in from a corner, his first goal of the season. Newcastle hoping to be more lively now in this second period. After a sluggish opening 45 minutes, Tranmere of League Two took the lead midway through the first half. Elliot Nevitt capitalising on a three-on-one break with a goalkeeper. Newcastle back on level terms thanks to Jamal Lassell and now a very good start to the second half for Eddie Howe's team it is Tranmere 1 Newcastle 2 Yorkshire Derby at Elland Road Will Perry 10 minutes gone in this second half Kelly it's Leeds 2 Barnsley 1 a brilliant atmosphere in this sellout Yorkshire Derby what a game as well Sinistera and Clicks penalty put Leeds 2 up Anderson pulled one back in the foot of the post I thought it was Melier at the time but it was the foot of the post denying an equaliser from Styles from the spot in fact Styles has just had another penalty waved away a good shout it looked as well Cock and Strauch on for Llorente and Cooper at the break for Leeds and Somerville's just come really close to a third for Leeds blazing just wide after a lovely bit of skill. Leeds 2, Barnsley 1. And Forest Green Rovers taking on Brighton and Hove Albion. Sahel Sahi. Where the Premier League Club Brighton are comfortable and they're leading by two goals to nil. Good strikes from Dennis Undov and Stephen Alzate. Forest Green just had a chance. They've started the second half well. Josh Marsh just inside the penalty area. Good save by the Brighton goalkeeper. Forest Green nil, Brighton 2. Thank you very much for that, Sahil. We'll take you around all those games and we'll let you know if there are any goals throughout our second half commentary of PSV Eindhoven against Rangers. But the players are making their way out onto the pitch for the second half and taking you through this one. James McFadden and John Murray. Yes, thank you, Kelly. Welcome, everyone, back to the Philips Stadium in Eindhoven. This is an interesting move that's been made by Ruud van Nistelrooy change at half time it's the captain Luke de Jong who's being substituted so you have to assume that there's a problem there an injury problem and he is being replaced by the exciting 19 year old Xavi Simons who's just been signed from Paris Saint-Germain this summer they've got a buyback clause but there was Rangers interest in him as well so there's another one James McFadden who um, could be a story in the making and we've just we've just seen Luke de Jong with with uh, some wrapping around his right calf yeah it's interesting he's obviously carrying carrying an oak but uh, he's in the, the, the calf and this is a, a player that's come on for him that has had so much spoken about him so much hype over his young career I'm actually excited to see what he's going to produce tonight so he's gone over to the the right hand side Xavi Simons who um, started out at Barcelona you know there's been great things great things said about him and expected of him for a long while now still only 19 so we'll see what he does PSV nil, Rangers nil, the second half underway, a goal at Elland Road, Will Perry. The fourth goal of the night, John, at Elland Road, and we've still got more than half an hour to play. It's Leeds 3, Barnsley 1, Sinistera causing problems down the left, ball in, it only was far, as far as Kitching, who played it out to Mateus Click. He's now on a hat-trick because he finished past Walton. Beautiful curling effort into the top right corner, Leeds 3, Barnsley 1. Thank you, Will. A choice of listening tonight. You can listen to the remainder of Tranmere and Newcastle on Five Live Sports Extra. But here on Five Live and BBC Sounds, it is the second leg of this Champions League playoff match for a place in the group stages of the competition. PSV have not been there since 2018. And here come PSV. Simons with his first touch, plays it to the left-hand side to Saibara. Then the cross from Max, it hangs it up. It's headed away, though, by Sands in the middle for Rangers. Comes out to Sangari, who was looking to get the shot in, but it was nicked away from him, and it's out for a throw on the far side, James McFadden. Yeah, fast start for PSV, but it's well defended again in the end by Rangers. And it, <laughs> you can't help but wonder if it was a cross that was actually ideal for Luke de Jong, who is no longer on the pitch, but well defended by Sands again. And whether he injured himself, you know, there were a couple of big stretches, weren't there, at the end of the first half, trying to get on the end of things, whether it was that, but that's a blow, that's a blow to lose the captain and the number nine. Yeah, as I think as well, because of how dangerous he looks, how good his movement is, when the ball's wide and it, it comes into the box, um, so it is, a, it is a huge blow, um, but I'm sure, you know, it, it just brings a, a different, maybe dynamic, maybe they've got more of a threat in behind. That Rangers back line beside Barry being the one up there. Mm. Um, be interesting to see how that plays out because they still look like they want to put crosses into the box. So mm. when you lose that instinctive striker that's got, got the movement, then then it maybe alters the, 
the deliveries coming into the box. So Ruud van Nistelrooy has put the, the right winger, Ismail Saibari, in the, uh, in the centre forward position. Gakpo on the left. The rest of the, the PSV team, Benitez the goalkeeper, Teza, Ramilio, Obispo and Max the back four. Then uh, Fierman with Sangare and Gutierrez in midfield. Now the substitute Simons on the right, Saibari in the middle and Gakpo on the left hand side. Big chance Gakpo had as well at the end of the first half. I think some of the other opportunities PSV had at Rangers as well, the chances they missed there. Now they've really stacked up on in this tie. And if they don't go through, and Rangers do, really PSV have only got themselves to blame. Rangers as they started, McLaughlin in goal, Tavernier, Goldson, Sands and Barisic. Then Kamara with Lawrence and Lundstram, Tillman, Kent and Cholak. Free kick, four Rangers near the halfway line. Still nil-nil. It was interesting seeing the pictures of Giovanni Van Bronckhurst coming out of the tunnel, he was all smiling, so he must have been happy uh, with the performance of his, his team in the first half. And yeah, I can understand why, because for last periods they, they had control in the game. They need to try and get that back, get Ryan Kent higher up the pitch. On a couple of occasions, and more often than not, his first touch is backwards. Can he go and take a positive first touch and get at the back line? Because he is the player that can eliminate you know, the opposition and create opportunities. PSV nil, Rangers nil. PSV win the ball back on the halfway line, but uh, will go back into their own half. Yet Van Broncos down there. He's gone. Uh, he's gone pale blue shirt, which is always a bold move on a hot night. The uh, the former Dutch international back here with one of his old clubs. Not too dissimilar to your own shirt, John. Well, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> and maybe it comes from how I'm feeling inside this shirt. It's a sweaty night here. Veerman plays the ball out to the right-hand side and then it comes back centrally to Sangari. He had a, an opportunity with a header shortly before half-time. Gutierrez now, a little dash to the edge of the area, looks to get it back. It's uh, Saibari who carries it away from the penalty area and goes back to Ibrahim Sangari. Now Teza on the right, putting a couple of very good crosses in the first half. Sangari again, centrally, PSV playing from right to left in this second period. Teza now on the right, another one of those balls in, that's stabbed away by Goldson, just over the head of Saibari at the near post, and Rangers trying to relieve the pressure here, Tillman, the Bayern Munich man on loan from Bayern Munich, playing the ball back to Goldson who misplaces his pass behind Tavernier, it's out for a throw, PSV looking to take this quickly, which they do, Gakpo, Rangers have got to cut out mistakes like that. They can be costly. Gutierrez. Gutierrez just puts his foot on the ball and then finds the left back, Max. And then Gutierrez chips it down the line. That's for Gakpo to, to chase onto, but Goldson comes across and is able to, to lift it away. Cody Gakpo, 23 years old. He, he is from Eindhoven, born and bred here. Joined the club when he was seven years old was the Dutch player of the year last season and it, uh, we were reliably informed that it is his dream to, to see this PSV team back in the Champions League and perhaps his last act tonight might uh, help them to do that before he leaves for the Premier League but uh, we'll see about that they've won a free kick on the left hand side and it is Gakpo and Max who are there together so Rangers hold their line on the edge of the penalty area PSV have three players grouped towards the far side of the D, two near the, the edge in the middle. And Gakpo and Max just have a final word with one another. It's a two-man Rangers war. Kent wiping the sweat off his forehead. It is Max with the delivery, and it is headed wide by Gutierrez. Clear header, seven yards out, but the offside flag was up, and it wouldn't have counted even if he had headed it into the net. Yeah, I thought it must have been offside with how much time and space it goes way, way early. It is an unbelievable cross from Max and he thinks he's onside. He should be hitting the target at the very least. That is a golden opportunity but he goes too early and it's offside and that's good for Rangers because they're holding a the line, they're brave and they make sure that they're not giving away easy opportunities, especially the young men off the pitch now. It's one less player they have to worry about in terms of height, in terms of physicality and aggression to go and attack it. So, yeah, it was good defending from Rangers. PSV nil, Rangers nil. Five Live and BBC Sounds. We'll uh, go through it all on the Football Daily, of course, which you'll be able to download as usual in the morning. Uh, and, of course, on BBC Sounds, you can rewind the live radio if you go to a match. 
you go to a match as good as James did on Sunday, you can rewind the commentary and listen to it all over again if you click on, look for Five Live and then click on the schedule. Here is uh, Lawrence, who just gives it away though, passes it straight to a disco. Now it's through for Gakpo, but the touch ran away from him and it's through for a goal kick to Rangers. Still nil-nil. So uh, McLaughlin comes across to retrieve the ball. Again, the, the volume has wound up inside this stadium. Not a seat to be spared here. Desperate to get back into the Champions League. They want that money as well to try and get closer to Ajax. They did beat Ajax in the cup final last season. Eric Ten Hag's Ajax at the time. So they won the, uh, the Dutch Cup last season. And then, uh, and then beat them again. A big win against Ajax under new management at the start of this season in the Johan Cruyff Shield match. That was one of Ruud van Nistelrooy's first matches as the ball bounces on the halfway line and Lundstrand now volleys it forward chested away by Taser. Taser is able to find Simon and the slightly bit 19 year old works it back to Sangare the ball forward looking for Taser but that was read by Sands did well slid in and cleared it away downfield and TSV start again from in front of their own penalty area here is uh, Obispo who carries it towards halfway and now gives it to Max, and Max speeds down the left and swings over a high cross, but there's no one there in a red and white striped shirt anywhere near it, and it bounces all the way to Simon on the right-hand side. And Simon now with a half a step over, uses Taser behind him, now near the right corner of the box. The attempted slip pass through by Veerman. That's blocked. And now Sangari back out to Simon again on the right. Simon cuts back onto his left foot. There's another little dance around the ball there. Flicks it through with the outside of his boot to Taser. Taser is closed down by Barisic and the ball bounces away. And Rangers should clear that. Kent still deep inside his own territory. Rolls it into the path of Tillman, who I think might have had his ankles clipped. He did, says referee Marciniak. And it's a free kick to Rangers halfway inside their own half. There's <laughs> another chance for Ryan Kent to run forward. You know, the ball's running. He can let it go across his body and drive in his 1v1 at Tezzi. He turns back inside and keeps it safe and, and plays a, a pass to Tillman who does well to win the free kick. But I, I just want to see him being a bit more positive, take, taking a risk. You look at PSV, the opportunities they create is because they're trying to play those passes. They're putting balls into an area that are begging to be attacked. Rangers just need to try and, I, I wouldn't say force it more, but try and take a little bit more risk in and around the box to go and put PSV under pressure. Rangers in possession. Lundstrand now shapes his body and, and finds that pass to Kent on the left. Kent up against Simon, goes past him, up against Taser who stands up strong. Kent played it past him and then ran into Taser, went down, no free kick. And now Rangers again, Kamara's in there. Kamara trying to battle his way through into the penalty area but it runs away from him. And Taser finds Saibari on the halfway line. Good work though from Lundstrand to win it back. And now uh, over on the left-hand side, Rangers with Kamara. And then Kamara, square, and Lawrence. Lawrence just outside the D, goes past Gutierrez. Still going, Lawrence, right-footed shot, hits the crossbar, bounces down. Trollak was in there, but the offside flag is up against him as he shoots for goal. But Rangers strike the crossbar. It was like the angle of the post and bar from that shot from 22 yards from, uh, from Tom Lawrence. What a goal that would have been. It is unbelievable to find space. He's just running into bodies. He's dribbling all the way around them. Left foot, right foot. He manages to get it on his right foot. And he just tries to pass it, bend it beyond the goalkeeper, which he does. And he sees it crash off the bar, bouncing down to Cholak, who's offside. PSV playing it out from the back. I've lost possession. I've heard that before somewhere this season. But PSV win it back. And it's hit downfield and gap goes in an offside position. So it's a free kick. To Rangers, home frustration with that. But if, if he'd scored that, that would have been an, a, a Rangers classic. Oh, without doubt. It, it looks like he dribbles from the centre out to the left. It looks like he's running into trouble. L little step over, great close contact, uh, close control he's with, with both feet. And the chat, the space just opens up. It's not a great deal with space that he's got. It's very little back lift, and he just passes it towards that top corner sees it crash off the bar it would have been a hell of a goal it would Lawrence who scored in Rangers last three matches and I mean that was inches away millimetres away from going in it struck the underside of the crossbar near the corner could easily have, have bounced down into the net Rangers again they've been buoyed by that Tavernier now Kamara flicked by Tillman tried to find Cholak inside the penalty area but uh, it didn't work out 
And PSV were able to block, but it's won back again. And Cholok now in the box, shoots left footed, but shoots into uh, the body of Romilio. And it bounces away out for a throw on the left hand side. Now nah, they've been energised by that shot off the crossbar, there's no doubt. Ryan Kent win the ball back. And he plays it and he, he actually makes the run to go inside them, inside them, but Cholak's been stabbed the service, there's no doubt he's taking a chance. Throwing's taken, here's the cross from the left hand side, but Benitez comes, the goalkeeper, and makes a, uh, a catch which he initially pats down but then gathers and then gives it out. And, and Veerman with a long ball downfield, they're looking for Gakpo now on the left. Gakpo very closely watched by Tavernier, and the Rangers captain forced him to go back to the halfway line through the middle, but nothing doing there for, for PSV. Gakpo couldn't get to it. And Rangers are able to, to take possession back again. So still nil-nil here in the uh, Champions League playoff. So 2-2 two -two on aggregate. No way goals rule anymore, remember. So if it stayed like this, it would be extra time. And in the four matches in the Carabao Cup, these are the latest scores, as I have them. Forest Green nil, Brighton 2, Leeds United 3, Barnsley 1, Tranmere 1, Newcastle 2, and Wickham 0, Bristol City 1. All of them 7.45 kickoffs. It was uh, a nine o'clock kickoff here, Dutch time, eight o'clock back home. So uh, not too much longer left in those matches. And we'll have the third round draw, by the way, after 10 o'clock tonight. We'll tell you the third round draw uh, at some point between 10 and 10.30 before Colin Murray takes over after uh, five live sport tonight. But this is still in the balance here. We've played almost an hour still no goals on the night remarkably Keza with the ball inside his own half passes up to uh, the almost frail little figure of, of Simon there on the far side back it comes into central defense to Obispo who scored the goal that made it 2-2 at Ibrox eight days ago Gutierrez now to the left hand side to Max and PSV having to go all the way back to goalkeeper Benitez playing it out from the back and it's one back Tillman's in and he squares it and Cholak puts it in the net and PSV, what an awful error again, not for the first time in this tie and Rangers have taken big advantage, they've scored first here in Eindhoven it's Cholak with the goal he couldn't miss this one and it's PSV nil, Rangers won and maybe that's the goal that brings the Champions League riches to Ibrox, who knows we did say there would be goals, John, and it's brilliant play from Tillman. The pressure from every player. They're going and pressing in numbers, and when it comes in to the midfield, brilliant from Tillman to win the ball back. He's got the presence of mind to get his head up, square it across to Cholak, who has the simplest of tasks of rolling it into the empty net. Absolutely spot on, John. He was never going to miss. Rangers are in front. The game was opening up in the last five or ten minutes. I'm pretty sure it's going to get more open again, but it's Rangers that have found the breakthrough. Far too casual from Romilio on the edge of his own penalty area, trying to play it out from the back. They'd actually got into difficulties about two or three minutes earlier trying to do it. Here's Gakpo now, trouble for PSV. Gakpo, the whole cuts in and shoots right-footed, but straight at McLaughlin, who's able to drop forward onto it. And and make a routine save, but far too casual. Romilio on the edge of his own penalty area, the, the, the central defender, the Brazilian, Tillman just all over him, easily dispossessed him, and, uh, and Rangers, a split second later, 1-0 up. Yeah, I think that overall the, the, the Rangers side were, were forcing PSV back. They had good numbers in the areas that was making it very difficult for PSV to play through. And when the ball comes back to the, the goalkeeper, he has to just clear it. It's a risky pass to play it into that area, especially when he's got his back to play and he's not going to bounce it back. He has to just clear it. I know that the de, de Jong's off and he would be the one to go and to go and challenge for it, but you have to understand your team's in trouble. Don't be playing into that area because it is so dangerous, as has happened, when you lose it. And he's being substituted, Romilio. It's been substituted by Ruud van Nistelrooy, and uh, he walks straight off the field. Ruud van Nistelrooy does go to him actually, and just give him a pat on the back. But you can tell he is—you uh, can tell he's devastated by that mistake. And Ruud van Nistelrooy's made the decision to 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 bring him straight off the field. 
And I think it was Gutierrez as well, isn't it, who is, uh, is also off. So it's a double change. Gutierrez off, Rangers having to defend now. Here is Simon just outside the penalty area. Ball to the right-hand side. They've brought on Hus Kill, uh, who is a midfielder, and also Philip Mwene, who is uh, a right-back. So that's a little bit of a rejig by uh, Ruud van Nistelrooy. Teze is going to send the centre back. Yeah, that's what's happened. So Philip Mwene, Austrian international, has taken over his right back. But um, they'll miss Taser coming forward as, as the right back. Yeah, they will, but you would think that when he's on to provide a, an attacking outlet, certainly not. He doesn't look a, a, as tall or as physical. He looks like he, he's got good speed and wants to get forward. So maybe it is just you know, a tactical switch rather than the fact that Romario was a guy that get caught on the ball. And Hoos Kill has taken up a, a central position, the uh, the number 20, who was at Feyenoord last season, scored 21 goals uh, on loan at Feyenoord, and then was bought by PSV. And now the uh, ball is being taken forward by Simon for PSV. He has his legs taken away from him, and uh, referee Marciniak had to be quickly in there. Barisic and was squaring up with Simon. Barisic, I think, feels that Simon has, has thrown himself to the ground. But it's a yellow card that has been shown to Lundstram, who put in the challenge. Yeah, professional foul from John Lundstram just stopping the attack. If it sent off for one, one <laughs> of them at the weekend, but there was a chance early in the game where he, could, he was he was going to do it, and then he just stopped himself from doing it. But that is a more dangerous situation, so I can understand exactly why he's done it. But we know the threat that PSV carry from set plays. Rangers are less than half an hour away from joining Celtic in tomorrow's Champions League group stage draw. They lead 1-0, but have to defend this free kick. Gakpo plays it in and at the back post, it's goal scorer Cholak who was there to, to head it behind. He wasn't sure where Till was behind him, so it's a corner to, uh, to PSV. So it's corner defending time again for Rangers. Gakpo trots across there, ready to take this. Rangers have got to stand strong here. This could be... This could be something of a rearguard action from them over the course of the next half hour. Here it is, played in towards the, the penalty spot. Kill is jumping for it, but he's beaten in the air. Rangers are able to clear. It comes out to Max. In fact, it's been brought back for a foul on Sangari near the right corner of the penalty area. And that's another yellow card. This time for Kent. Tavernier comes across and is trying to plead the case, but it's no no good. Just just stepped in on on. Sangare and, and caught him just on the toe end really yellow card for Kent yeah I mean it, it looks worse because it, it's, it's almost like he stamps down he, he, he does show the studs but he has, the ball is in the air he's trying to nick the ball I'm not so sure there's a great deal of contact if any yeah. so a free kick in a dangerous position and a yellow card 1-0 Rangers lead if you've just switched on but they've got to defend this free kick now Max is over there might be the in swinger in fact, it's the outswinger towards the penalty spot. Lundstrand there was able to stoop headed away under no particular pressure, and then it's just played away downfield to uh, comparative safety by Lawrence. PSV nil, Rangers one. Long, long one forward for uh, from Mwene. but Rangers are able to to bring it down and clear away on the edge of the penalty area. It's been another goal in the Wickham Bristol City League Cup tie, Robin Cowan. The championship side who have retaken the lead here, Wickham 1, Bristol City 2. Great work down this near side, the left, the cross stood up and Kane Wilson with his first goal for the club, cushioned volley into the far corner, really lovely yes, technique Tillman, that goal. Into the area, shoots low and it's well saved by Benitez. Went down, had the chance on the edge of the box. Sorry Robin again. It is uh, just to clarify, Wickham 1, Bristol City 2. But a big chance for Tillman there, but shot too close to the keeper. Huge chance, it comes from Ryan Kent as well, down the left-hand side. Just drives inside, gets his shot away, it gets blocked, falls to Tillman. Takes a really good first touch and fires it with his left foot. Benitez getting down, and then PSV just can't get it clear. There's a, there's a great deal of panic when the ball drops in the box, and that will give Rangers real heart, heart and give them a lift that they can cause them problems. Yeah, and perhaps trying to to exploit the fact that PSV have got to chase the game now. It could work in their favour. Tillman 
who was heavily involved in the in the opening goal very nearly very nearly had the opportunity to to make it 2-0 there but Rangers again curling shot from the edge of the box from Cholak just snatched on it really in the D came to him quickly but he hit it over the top by a couple of yards yeah it's Lundstrom putting the pressure on and the ball rolls to Cholak but Lundstrom then goes for the the one two and if he if he sees him he's in he's in and goal he snatches at it and just scoops it over the bar groans from the home supporters PSV playing the ball out from the back again and Benitez looked a bit stiff there the goalkeeper when it came back to him and he played it out to the far side and almost fell over PSV nil Rangers one and then there's a Foul on the far side by uh, the newly arrived Mweni on uh, on Ryan Kent, and that is a yellow card for the substitute right back. Just thinking as well with Tillman, James. You know, having uh, having done what he's done in the second half here, big part of that goal, that opening goal for Cholak. He was the one who scored the goal, that third goal against Union Saint Gilloise in the previous qualifying round at Ibrox when Rangers turned it around from 2-0 down you know that he, he has um, those two contributions are worth their weight in Champions League gold they sure are and it, domestically he's been playing really well he was rested at the weekend against Hibs but he's, he's really he's really hit the ground running for Rangers he's a player that when they brought him in they had high hopes for um, and given the fact that he's not really played a lot of first team football He's been a great signing so far for Rangers. He'll get better as the season goes on. And what a contribution he's had to, to the progression of, well, hopefully, lightly progression into the Champions League group stages. PSV nil, Rangers one. It's still finely poised. Max playing it across. It's intercepted by Kamara, but he's given it to Saibari, and Saibari cutting it back. But Lundstrand was there in ahead of Gakpo to put it out of play for uh, what is a throw. It did go out for a throw this side of the corner flag. So Max takes that 1-0 Rangers lead the Cholak goal and uh, PSV trying to find a way through in the right back position but then uh, Saibari is, is picked up there's frustration there as well he fouled Lawrence he punched the air and referee Marciniak is going to march over and point his finger at Saibari and tell him that he can cut that out yeah uh, I think that's good referee and pretty surprised he didn't show the yellow card for the descent because he was quite animated he clearly feels it wasn't a foul but I think Tom Lawrence does really well nips in and you know I wouldn't say by the foul but he knows exactly what he's doing he said Barry's taking the bait and the referee especially in Europe normally they don't they don't take anything in terms of descent so I think he's let him off with it there 1-0 Rangers lead Cholak's goal that's his fifth for Rangers he's also scored in both of these ties against Union and now as the ball is played forward for uh, Rangers but that's way beyond now the, uh, the central defender Abispo who's able to pass it forward so uh, Cholak who uh, yeah, scored in the first leg scored the uh, opening goal for Rangers in the first leg now has scored the opening goal in the in the second leg as well having scored goals against Rangers in this competition last season for Malmo here's Taser Taser though gives it away poor pass forward from him and Rangers have got it back 70 minutes played now 20 minutes to go that 20 minutes away from a place in tomorrow's draw PSV building it with it on the right hand side Simons though that's a misplaced pass from him played up to goal scorer Cholak Taser uh, wins the ball back no free kick says the referee Veerman plays it on towards the edge of the penalty area and when he's onto that now Simons dances into the box chips it across to the back post Max is there but shoots wide with his right foot pulls it wide from eight ten yards out and he's got his head in his hands and the referee's booked Borna Barisic for that challenge as well it's good again from the referee he lets it play on Javi Simons does unbelievably to get himself free in the right hand side nice little move right foot left foot finds a space and he stands up and I think Max has got time to adjust his his feet to make it that he can hit it with his left foot he opts to go with the right and to the relief of Rangers because he fires it wide I think he can I think he can change his feet and get that on his left foot and that is a bit of a let off for Rangers double change for Rangers and Scott Arfield and Scott Wright uh, coming on the two Scots coming on together 
So Scott Arfield with all of his experience, the 33-year-old coming into the midfield, Kamara coming off, and Tom Lawrence is going to be replaced by Scott Wright. We'll get a word from James McFadden on that in a moment. But first to Prenton Park and Conor McNamara. They still Tranmere 1, Newcastle 2. Tranmere throwing everything now and trying to get an equaliser that would lead to a, a penalty shootout after the 90 minutes if they could make it 2 2. Elliot Nevin, who scored Tranmere's goal in the first half with their best chance of the second period. He was denied by Carl Darlow. And Jordan Turnbull's had another header there on target. But it remains Tranmere 1, Newcastle 2. And our lead's still heading through, Will Perry. It's to go. Lead 3, Barnsley 1. Jesse Marshall's side heading into that third round and keeping that unbeaten record. Yes, shoots but it's saved good save by McLaughlin came out quickly and slid in to make the stop big moment for the Rangers goalkeeper and now they break away down the other end Abispo though is able to get there first ahead of the newly arrived Scott Wright and Benitez clears downfield that's a huge moment Gakpo made it on earlier I thought he might have been offside clearly not and John McLaughlin's not to know about it he's out his box quick and he makes a brilliant save. Whether he knew too much about it or not, it's still a huge save and a huge moment of the match. Yeah, we'll go back to Will Perry shortly, but Rangers coming forward again, 1-0 up, looking for a second. Here's Scott Wright. Wright touches it back now centrally. Arfield to uh, Tavernier on the, on the right flank. Max snapping away at him, and Tavernier just keeping possession, and then uses Arfield, and Arfield goes back into his own half, and I think Goldson will, uh, will knock it square. So there we are, two more opportunities for PSV come and go Max with that chance at the back post on his right foot though the left back screwed it badly wide and then Gakpo with that that chance running through yeah and they will continue to probe they will continue to create opportunities because they're a good side they've got good players particularly in the attacking areas but Rangers just just need to do exactly what they're doing at times take this thing out of the game keep the ball if there's any doubt just clear it and that, that's what they've had to do they've brought on freshness and Scott Wright and Scott Arfield Wright is more direct he wants to take players on there's an option down that right hand side Scott Arfield with his experience and his energy I know he's getting he's getting older but he's still got great energy but what he also has is a goal threat because he goes beyond the striker makes brilliant runs from midfield and Gio Van Bockhurst may be hoping that they'll get another opportunity Sangari is carrying the ball forward through the middle but he uh, has three Rangers players converging on him here's Simon again Simon plays it in, looks for the 1-2 but then can't get there for the return pass from Sangari and Rangers are able to clear it out for a corner another corner, this is getting tense very tense if you're a Rangers fan there are about 1600 of them officially although they're, they're in all parts of the ground I must say as uh, PSV make another change and it's Saibari who is off and so coming on it's Carlos Vinicius the, the former Tottenham man who was um, thought to be out injured he's on loan from Benfica and here is the corner which is played in they're looking for him well, it's a risk, this, from Van Nistelrooy. I'm not sure he's fully fit, Vinicius. And he's on, and he's into the thick of the action. He's come on as the central striker. Yeah, and he's got a touch on that, that cross that came into the box. He couldn't get it goalwards. But he's clearly you know, a player that, that Van Nistelrooy feels is a risk worth taking because we've spoken about how much this means to the club with getting into the Champions League. And it is, it is one of them when sometimes you are struggling to say, right, if you had to play a, a huge game, would you be ready? Clearly feels he's ready. Rangers taking an edge to take this goal kick, so I think we can safely go back to Will Perry at Leeds. He had a 20. We will in a minute or two, once we establish communication with Alan Drode. Leeds are winning by three goals to one. Uh, Newcastle 2-1 up on Tranmere, Bristol City 2-1 up on Wickham, Brighton 2-0 up on Forest Green. Back it goes to goalkeeper McLaughlin. Played a very big part, McLaughlin, with that, that save and other saves as well in the match. But PSV, uh, there's something of an irony here that Ruud van Nistelrooy's team can't score goals. Yeah. And, they, and they've been banging them in, they've been rattling them in, 20 so far in in all of the matches they've played, the six matches this season, but the opportunities they've missed in this tie. Here they are with it on the right-hand side. Mweni is there, Simons as well. And then back to Mweni, who under pressure from uh, 
from Ryan Kent gives it to Piers on the halfway line. That's a poor pass forward for PSV. Lundstrom though is beaten to it centrally by by Till, and then Till gets it again. Uses Fearman who's in the in the centre circle, and we have. Uh, 12 minutes plus added time to play that is all rangers are 12 minutes away from a place in the champions league group stages good work at the back as it's it's headed back safely to mclaughlin who uh, will drop on it and uh, and they want him to get on with it but he's going to he's going to push the envelope here mclaughlin and referee marciniak is on to him but i think he'll they'll take a yellow card if it wastes a little while and he's still holding the ball and then it's delivered away downfield. He, he must be fairly close to a yellow card, the Rangers goalkeeper. Uh, it's played, uh, it's rattling around in the centre circle. Bounces to Gakpo, but Goulson's in with the challenge. And it breaks for Tavernier. And Tavernier is going to run it down the right hand side. He's, uh, he's in no hurry here. Is it too early to play for the corner flag? Um, possibly, but I mean, it's just threatening it, isn't it? It's just drawing the players out. Oh, that's uh, lost centre field by Lundstrand. And then uh, Simons runs into, there's a collision down there, he goes down, but PSV still in possession, but then the pass is, is wayward from, from centre field. And uh, straight out of play from Fearman. It was behind Gakpo and it's a throw into Rangers, and again a chance for them to slow the game down. Rangers are winning 1-0 here. Rangers, who, since they were last in the Champions League in the group stage 12 years ago, back in 2010, I mean, it's an extraordinary story, the liquidation crisis, dropping down into the third division and then eventually working their way back. Transformation at the club, winning the title back last season under Steven Gerrard, or rather the season before last. And now here under Van Bronckhorst's management, the former Rangers man, back in his home country, on the verge of what would be a really, really notable achievement but it's not over yet. Mwene with it on the right-hand side for PSV. 30 yards out. Clips the ball into the penalty area. And then it's worked central. Simons is there. Simons square from him. Fiemann's going to shoot left-footed, but it's well wide. Arfield was sliding in, but uh, slashed it well wide in the left post. Yeah, he gets that horribly wrong. I thought Ar Arfield had actually managed to get the block with how, how poor the effort was. And they're, they're still probing PSV. They still look dangerous. Maybe they're lacking that, that cutting edge, you know, that, that player, well, not maybe, they're definitely lacking a player that is going to step up and, and take some of the opportunities. But they'll continue to try and create those chances because they've looked really good at times. Maybe just the final decision, the final pass, or the final execution has let them down. Well, we're into the last 10 minutes now. Hold on to your hats. Rangers 1-0 up, Goldson is shoved over by Vinicius. Free kick to Rangers, halfway inside their own half. Rangers, all of those European matches last season, the Champions League qualifiers, then all of the games in the, the Europa League, they won precisely one away from home. That was Borussia Dortmund though. Really notable win last season in the last 32. But this would be, this would be right up there. This would be a famous Rangers European night. Rangers with the free kick then. McLaughlin plays it downfield, comes off the head of Obispo, who is uh, challenged by, by Scott Wright. And it's out of play for a throw. Ten yards back from the corner flag, Tavernier trots forward, but it's a slow trot. Nine minutes to go. Tavernier now in position to take this throw in. He's got Scott Wright on the, uh, on the dead ball line. He's got Arfield with the run. It goes to the throw to, to Wright. And then uh, Gakpo in with the challenge, the ball bounces out of play, it's given as Rangers throw. Tavernier, dummies to take it to Arfield, that'll waste two or three more seconds. And then dummies to take it to right, does take it to right near the corner flag. It, it, it is chested down, chested out of play by right to throw into PSV. This is exactly what Rangers need to do. And it is frustrating to play against. Obviously, we want to see drama and excitement, but this is exactly what they need to do to stay, take the sting out of the game, to frustrate PSV, and ultimately to, to limit the, the chances that they have between now and the end of the game. Rangers leading through Antonio Cholak's goal. On the hour. Ball out for a throw-in for PSV. 
which will be taken back to Max, who's going to go all the way back to Abispo. A goal at Forest Green, Sohail Sahi. Ended here, John Forest Green nil, Brighton three, Evan Ferguson, he's added the third, and he sent Brighton through to the third round. Full time, Forest Green nil, Brighton three. Brighton through to the draw, which is uh, a little later on this evening. We'll have news of that 10 o'clock onwards tonight on Five Live Sport. PSV in possession. A big draw for Rangers, potentially. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Is from four o'clock UK time onwards tomorrow in Istanbul. You'll hear it unfold in drive when uh, it looks with this scoreline as though Rangers' name will be in it. But Gakpo on the edge of the penalty area gives it to Vinicius. Vinicius shoots on the turn, but two Rangers men are there and they're able to block it together. And then it bounces centrally for Tillman and is clipped away, chipped away by Goldson. Connor Goldson was talking to us yesterday about playing in League Two for Shrewsbury what it would mean to get into the Champions League and it's played for the right and right is away from Abispo who slides in, brings him down it's a free kick for Rangers and a yellow card for the PSV central defender it's terrific from Scott Knight it's a clearance from Conor Goldson he heads it inside to Arfield Arfield plays it down the line shows good speed to get on the end of it and he's taken out and it's a brilliant foul because it's a yellow card Scott Knight was in the box if it gets past him well, he's gone down, stayed down, and he's suggesting that he needs some treatment, surprise, surprise. So, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're calling on the medical people, so that'll get us a chance to go to Allen Road and we'll tarry again. John leads three, Barnsley one, Sinistera put Leeds in front with a long ranger, a click penalty made it 2-0. Anderson pulled one back with a header past Melier. Styles was denied an equaliser after he saw his spot kick smash against the foot of the post before Click finished the job with his second. Leeds three, Barnsley one. Thank you, Will. And to Wickham, Bristol City, Robin Cowan. All over here, Bristol City into the third round. 3-1 winners over Wickham. Semenyo capping off a wonderful display from Nigel Pearson's side. Kaji and Kane Wilson with the goals for Bristol City after Al Ali Hala Hamadi had leveled things up after the break. So Bristol City through, Wickham 1, Bristol City 3. Lengthy treatment still going on for Scott Wright, much to PSV frustration. So we'll call in at Tr Prenton Park again with Conor McNamara. Very much the closing stages deep into stoppages now. Tranmere 1, Newcastle 2. Newcastle finishing this game with a much stronger team after Eddie Howe uh, emptied the bench. Tranmere giving it everything though, seconds to go. And uh, Marco Van Hinkle is coming on, the former Chelsea man. Trotting onto the field now, sprinting on to replace Max. So Van Hinkle into the midfield. Ruud van Nistelrooy, that's his fifth and final, so in fact, no, it's his fourth substitution. Free kick for Rangers, free kick for Rangers, who lead 1-0. Tavernier to the back post, but that's headed up and away by Sangare. Back to Tavernier it comes, who chests it down, he does point to the corner flag. They are now thinking corner flag Rangers, that's absolutely clear. 85 minutes on the clock, Tavernier gets it back, thinks about the cross, but then thinks again and turns back towards that red and white PSV corner flag still holding the ball up Tavernier he's got two PSV players with him Gakpo's got the captain's armband now after De Jong went off perhaps his final appearance it looks as though they're going to fall short of the Champions League with this scoreline still just the one goal in it though ball out of play it's a PSV throw Rangers trying to pin them in down there that's exactly what Giovanni van Bronckhorst wants out he comes pulls up the sleeves on that light blue shirt he will be sweating tonight, and it's not just the heat in this situation. This is tense, dramatic stuff for a place in the group stage of the Champions League. Obispo hoists the ball out of play, slices it. It's a throw into Rangers. Scott Wright miscontrols the ball that is thrown back by the ball boy down there. And then uh, Tavernier actually takes over. He's going to take it. Again, the captain's pointing to the corner flag. There's the throw, right down the line. Obispo's underneath it. Cholak challenges. Thumped away, volleyed away by Sangari. Then helped back over by Goldson, down into the fullback position. Obispo heads it forward. It comes off our field and it's out for a throw to PSV. How long have we got now? 86. We're in the 87th minute, James. Yeah, and Rangers are just trying to waste as much time as they can, take the sting out of the game as much as they can, and force the ball back into what seems to be this left-back area for PSV, and even when they win it back, it's run down the line, and absolutely it's the right thing to do. Van Hinkel uh, catches Sands there, they're, they're claiming that he kicked out at him, and it is a yellow card for Van Hinkel, who's just come onto the field. So a yellow card for uh, 
the PSV number eight. And, uh, and Rangers have a valuable free kick. PSV nil, Rangers won. Rangers would be in pot four tomorrow with Celtic. Liverpool, Chelsea and Tottenham would be in pot two. Manchester City in pot one. That's how it's shaping up. Rangers are getting so close now. We're in the 88th minute. Free kick. Goldson to take this. Up he comes and strikes it diagonally. Again, they're looking for that corner. Rangers' favourite corner of the Phillips Stadium. Down to our right. Tavernier plays it infield. Tavernier gets a gets the ball bouncing back to him. Arfield now stabs it forward under pressure, but he stabbed it straight out of play. I think the ball, if, the, if there was a heat map on the ball, I think it spent the last 10 minutes in the that left back area down there. Oh. Throw, throw in taken to the halfway line. Rangers again with it. Cholak turns, he was tripped, he was clipped, went down, Sangare, free kick. Well, he, I mean, there was very little in it. He's, he's making out he's got cramp now as well, and, uh, and referee Marciniak is, is wise to this. It has finished, by the way, Tranmere 1, Newcastle 2. So Newcastle are through to the draw after 10 o'clock. Referee uh, has got Cholak to his feet. 88 minutes and 42 seconds played. Rangers winning 1-0. Tavernier, again, it's down into that corner for Scott Wright, but Abispo is able to shield the ball from him, and it's through for a goal kick that PSV need to take quickly. Well, they scored late, remember, against Monaco in the previous round. They were heading out, they scored late, although it was um, a very late one that took it to extra time, and then they won it in extra time with Luke de Jong's goal. Uh, handball by Lundstrom on the halfway line and he has already been booked but uh, the referee has been a little lenient there I think in other circumstances that could have been a yellow card for deliberate handball but it's a free kick that's all PSV to take this we're close to added time we are in the 90th minute now here's the long free kick to the edge of the penalty area Hart shouts for a push on Hink Van Hinkle there the referee's having none of that Rangers clear Scott Wright carrying it forward over the halfway line into the uh, opposition territory down he goes he's lost possession Taser has got it back picks out Siemens on the right hand side Siemens Kent trying to get back there Siemens comes in field he plays it square to Fearman. Four minutes of added time, that's all. Gakpo with the cross as we move into added time at the end of this dramatic tie. PSV heading into the Europa League. Rangers heading into the Champions League. But Gakpo back now. Obispo with a chance. And he's shot over the crossbar. 14 yards out. It opened up for the central defender. Probably the wrong man. And his shot flew high over. It's been the story of the night. They work it well again, he's got time, space, and he goes for power, he's leaning back, and he fires it over the bar. I think you're right, it's probably the wrong man for it to have fallen to. However, a lot of people in this team have been guilty of missing chances and poor finishing, and that has been the story of the night for PSV. Yeah, arch goal scorer Ruud van Nistelrooy's team have missed chance after chance. Not only tonight, but in the first leg at Ibrox as well. They had the chances to win it there and bring a lead here. Back to Eindhoven, but chances not taken, cost you matches, might cost them millions. Long one forward though, Goulton is up to head that away, well headed away for Rangers. Now to Gakpo on the left hand side, controls it with his left foot, crosses with his right, and it's headed away. Goulton was underneath it, he had red and white stripes on either side of him, but watched it onto his forehead, out of play for a throw down the left. We've had one minute of the four of added time, Rangers are going to make... Uh, Another change, and it is the goal scorer, Cholak, who's going to be replaced by Sakala. Fashion Sakala coming on, the Zambian international. This uh, is just to use up a little more time of these four minutes of added time. So Sakala, yet to appear off the, the bench this season. His first taste of uh, competitive action this season for Sakala. He'll be on there.
when the big moment comes, if it comes, PSV send it forward again, long to the edge of the penalty area, three or four players challenging, it bounces down and Rangers are able to bring it away, and Kent is running it away, now he's bringing it infield, looking to draw the foul, uh, Till with a challenge, no free kick, Siemens through the middle, step overs, the ball runs away from him and Rangers have got it back, and eventually McLaughlin clears out of play. Uh, he's a lucky boy, Ryan Kent, he had the opportunity early to play to Zakala, wide, and Tillman moved into the space that Sakala had vacated in the middle, he held his run, he didn't pick him, he'd Scott right in advance, he goes for the dribble, they lose the ball, and thank thankfully for Ryan Kent, it comes to nothing. 1-0 Rangers lead, and Rangers break away, but the ball played to Sakala for his first touch, he's got it on the right wing, well, he, has he not been watching? He didn't take it down to the corner flag, he lost possession, and PSV, will come forward for one more attack, perhaps. Back to the halfway line. Simons. Now back to Fearman. Fearman, long ball into the penalty area. That's headed across the box, and it's miskicked on the far side of the penalty area. Badly miskicked, and Rangers can nip in and clear it away. Well, big moments like that. He certainly fluffed his lines. Did Van Hinkle. Tillman now into the challenge. PSV win it back. Here's the cross from Mweni into the penalty area. It's headed goalwards but bounces harmlessly down and wide. And goalkeeper McLaughlin, just like one of the cricketers at Old Trafford tomorrow, I'm sure, just allows it to go through outside the off stump for a goal kick. And that wastes yet more time. We're in the final minute now. We're in the fourth minute of added time. Rangers are nearly there. They are, and I'm sorry, John, I don't know your cricket reference. It's not a sport that <laughs> I know an awful lot about, but yeah, it's, you know, another ball in and Van Hinkle, he needs to try and head it back across goal, he goes to put everything on it to try and score, he's never going to score for there, and John McLaughlin, cool as you like, just letting him run out for a goal kick. Big moment coming for Rangers Football Club, seconds away now, seconds away, back to goalkeeper Benitez, his mistake at Ibrox, so important in the tie, headed down, Kent, Kent's onto this ball, runs forward and he's blatantly pulled back by Simons and he reacts as well, he's on his feet, Marciniak is in there, the referee is like the, the, the referee in a, in a boxing fight, he actually got in between them and pulled them both apart, he was buffeting them from with both shoulders and it's a yellow card for Simons for that and I'm just wondering if Ryan Kent is going to be booked for his reaction, no he's not, no he's not and he was on a yellow card. Well, that could easily have been a yellow for him. It could have been. It's great play from Kent. And Seaman's just stopping the attack. It's understandable. Ryan Kent obviously unhappy with it. But I think you're right, John. I think he's very lucky because of his reaction that the referee hasn't flashed a second yellow. Free kick for Rangers. Uh, that's it! That's it! No. No, he says, play on. Play on. I think that was a false fake whistle. That's the real whistle. That's the final whistle. What a famous night for Rangers! They're into the group stage of the Champions League for the first time for 12 years. What a famous performance. A famous night in Eindhoven for Giovanni van Bronckhorst, who walks across to his old Dutch teammate, Ruud van Nistelrooy, and consoles him. First time van Nistelrooy has lost a competitive match as the head coach of PSV. But Rangers have won in the Philips Stadium to claim their place in that draw in Istanbul. The prestige, the millions and millions of Champions League Euros, but most importantly, what a night. What a night for the players and the fans who've witnessed this. It's incredible and it's a fantastic result for Rangers and it's a little bit of vindication for the manager when he spoke about the team and being together. They were together tonight. Great performances all over the pitch for Rangers. Good defending, good goalkeeping, good pressure and they get the job done. They get themselves in front, they waste a bit of time, hold on. Fantastic result, performance by Rangers. They're into the draw for the Champions League group stages. Yeah, the players are jumping for joy. They came off the bench. Some of the players who've been taken off raced onto the pitch. They jumped into one another's arms. Now they're consoling PSV. Devastating for them to, to not claim their place in the Champions League.
and miss out on, on all of that. But it's Rangers who are going to be hearing that Champions League theme again at Ibrox this season. Both Rangers and Celtic in the draw together tomorrow. And now, finally, the players, after, after the handshakes in the middle, they're now going to those boisterous Rangers fans up in the corner of the Phillips Stadium to thank them for their support. I'm not sure many really believe that they were going to be able to do this tonight, but last season, getting to the Europa League final, that long run in Europe, you know, the experience that you gather from that, that famous night in Dortmund that they had, but the feeling was that they weren't going to be able to replicate that, but they have, they've won away, and now they've backed up last season by a place in the Champions League group stages. Great night for them, PSV nil, Rangers won and Rangers win 3-2 on aggregate. Guys, it's been fantastic listening to you on what's been a brilliant night for Rangers. We're also joined by Charlie Adam and Roddy Forsyth. Charlie, this is a huge win for Rangers and there is a lot of praise for Antonio Cholak, particularly given the fact at the start of the night we were talking about Alfredo Morelos. This is the, one of the reasons why he's less of a, a need for Rangers. Absolutely, and these are the moments that you know, you have to turn up. Um, you know, they spent you know just short of two million pounds for Kolac, and um, he's come on. He's produced the goods. He's, he's done what he was brought to the football club to do to get them into the Champions League. Um, you know, over ten years ago, the, the club were in, in League Two. Now they're back in the Champions League, the, where everybody wants to play. The, the big, big competition. The big boys are in there. The big money's there, and this is huge for the football club. And. Um, Giovanni obviously made that decision the other day and he's, he's been he's been um, backed by that and the players have put in an incredible performance. Roddy, the, the Rangers players, the Rangers coaching staff are all over in the corner of the stadium celebrating with the Rangers fans who are up high in the, in the stand. Obviously, it's a hugely significant win emotionally, but practically speaking, this could have huge repercussions for Rangers. Yes, indeed. Just let's put this in context. Rangers have played in Eindhoven four times and never been beaten. In the run-up to this game, PSV had a free weekend. Rangers played with nine men into injury time at Easter Road. Five minutes of injury time. They travelled without Alfredo Morelos. He was the headline story. On the run into the stadium, they lost 20 minutes of prep time because PSV fans, uh, fans mo mobbed the Rangers buses. As the game got underway, they were very badly behind on the percentage of possession, but they fought their way back into it. We knew something might be on when Lawrence hit the crossbar. And then Cholak scored the opener and what proved to be the winning goal on a night that will go into Rangers history. And of course, it will now have an impact in terms of their bank balance, because like Celtic, they're going to bank something like 40 to 50 mil 30 to 40 million pounds from the group stage. And who knows what they might get when they go on. It's been a good year for them because they have already banked something in the region of f close to 50 million because of that Europa League run. So Rangers will now feel that the balance of power should be beginning to swing their way again in Glasgow and certainly the supporters have now got equal bragging rights with Celtic. They're both in the Champions League group stage. That's a great story for Scottish football, a great story for Glasgow. There's going to be a procession of these games before November. Yeah, because it's not just about the big money, as you say, Rod Roddy. James, you were saying this beforehand when you saw all the fans on the way to the ground, the procession of PSV fans who were there with flares, with smoke bombs, making all that noise, creating all that atmosphere. They're the big European nights that you want to be part of. And now we know for sure that Rangers are going to have more of them in the group stages of the Champions League. Yeah, as um, before the, the tie or, or when the, the, the draw was made, a lot, of, a lot of Rangers fans were a bit, I wouldn't say worried, but they would have preferred it to have been an away tie first and a home tie second because of the, the atmosphere at Ibrox and how much success they had last year was attributed to the, the atmosphere in the stadium, you know, the, the noise generated by the fans. So now they're into a group stage where they've got guaranteed three home games. They've got a good record at home in Europe. Um, so they, they will they will fancy taking on anybody and and that's not saying Rangers can, can beat anybody it's just that they will welcome anyone to Ibrox and feel they've got a chance of winning but they've now got a chance to enjoy the draw and look at it and say right who who, who can you get who, who who's possible for Rangers to play against rather than facing you know watching that and what that the, the what might have been and the reality of the Europa League group Whereas now they're in the Champions League, they get to face the best sides, they come to play 
uh, Ibrox against them. They get to test themselves against the biggest sides. And we can't overlook the fact, as, as Roddy mentioned, that the, the money they get for the Champions League is huge for Rangers. It's huge for Celtic. It's huge for any club. And also it filters down to the rest of the clubs in Scotland. So they benefit out of it as well. So it's a, it's a huge night for Rangers and one they will enjoy after tonight and they'll enjoy the draw tomorrow but it's back to business at the weekend because they've got a, they've got a, a team to catch in Celtic and that is the focus for them now. James McFadden and John Murray are in Eindhoven for us. We'll have more reaction from them. We'll also hear more from Charlie Adam and Roddy Forsyth between now and 10.30 as we reflect on Rangers reaching the group stages of the Champions League for the first time in 12 years. And then at 10.30...